Joining me at URSA 2016 is John Embry, CEO of USPTA. So John, tell us why you came to URSA 2016 to speak or attend this year. Yeah, thanks, Shabna. Um, you know, URSA has traditionally been a, a, a conference with so much fitness and wellness. Tennis hasn't been a part of the agenda for a long time. And it was great that we got the call that we wanted to put tennis back on the agenda. So I'm one of three speakers here talking about our category. And tennis for a lot of these clubs is really, really important. It's a, it's a, a focal point for their activity. The tennis member happens to be the most stable member of most clubs. So tennis is really important to a lot of these clubs. And it's nice to be back on the agenda again. That's awesome. So tell us, John, what, what has been the greatest thing that you've experienced here at URSA 2016? Well, I would say Ur the URSA conference for me, for me has always been so motivational inspiring. And if you attend any of the general sessions with some of the speakers and the headliners that they have, you always come away so inspired by what they have to say and how you're gonna change your business and the things that you can do differently. So I've always said the URSA conference has had some of the best keynote speakers of any conference I've ever been to. Speaking of inspirational leaders, who do you find inspirational in this industry? My mentor was a guy named Jim Baugh, who was president of Wilson Sporting Goods and was my mentor for 17 years. He now is the leader of the sports Fitness Industry Association headquartered out of Washington, D.C. And he is leading a charge right now to get Congress to pass legislation to help with this pandemic of inactivity that exists to try to get physical fitness back in the school. So what he is doing to help elevate really the awareness of why physical activity is so important is marvelous. And, and I've, I've been a, a friend and a fan and, and an employee and a partner with him for a long time. That's absolutely beautiful. Now being the CEO of USPTA, does any of this inspiration feed into the goals of what USPTA has lined up for the years to come? Yeah. We, we have two major goals. Uh, number one is we've got to improve the education that our members are getting on an annual basis. We have a professional development requirement that we just instituted in January of 2014. And over the course of a three year period, we're asking all of our members in good standing to get a certain number of credits, 12 hours, six credits of education, which doesn't seem like a lot, but yet it's the first time we've done it in 20 years and we're asking people to get that professional development. If they don't do that, we're gonna suspend them from their membership. Wow. And so that's, that's a big deal for us. So we're working really hard to educate all of our members of why it is important for them to continue their development, to learn and be educated wherever they may be going. That's number one. And number two, we are actually just made a decision in September of last year to relocate our headquarters after being in Houston for 26 years and we're going to Lake Nona which is where the United States Tennis Association is building the home of American tennis, and we're gonna have our own brand new office building right at the base of their operation. Wow. So that's a huge transition for us. We're gonna be moving in March of next year, one year from now. So a staff transition, getting the entire membership to get excited about what we're gonna be doing is a really big deal. So that's that's a huge initiative for us. That's impressive, John. Now you've given us some really great short-term goals that USPTA has between year one and year three. Now where do you see the role of, of tennis and racquetball sports occurring in the fitness industry over the next five to 10 years? Because fitness and wellness is becoming so important to the industry in general, I think marrying up what the tennis professional is doing on court with the fitness coordinator, fitness director at the club is vital because if our members want to make a living and want to keep their members, their customers on the court, playing injury free, they've got to have more fitness and they're going to perform better on the court. So I think the idea of having wellness and fitness together with tennis is very, very important. So Titleist has done it with the Titleist Performance Institute. Mm -hmm. We're looking at doing something like that to train our professionals so that they can work with fitness directors and medical advisors to keep their customers on the court for a longer period of time. It's gonna help them earn more money and prolong their career. Wow, with, with you at the helm of USPTA, I think they're in good standings, but I have a question for you. What are the greatest challenges that you foresee for your industry? This is a big one. We're getting older. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the baby boomers are getting older, and yeah. right now our average age is 49. Wow. And over okay. the last 20 years, it's gone from 34 to 49. And what's great is our membership, we're keeping members longer and they're staying involved longer, but who's that pipeline? What's the millennial generation? Do they view tennis teaching as an aspirational career? And we've got a real concern because when we age out, 
who's going to take our place. Right. So the challenge for us is to get new people into our organization, new people into our sport who are coming through professional tennis management schools or they're playing high school or college tennis. Do they look at tennis as a potential career? And I want them to do that. So we've got to make sure that there's a career path for them that they can feel like, wow, I can make a good living teaching tennis and feeling a passion that they have. And do you believe that URSA 2016 is a place where you can tap into this market or you can focus on, on these people? You know, it's hard for us here because these, these are, there's so much fitness here, there's not enough tennis here, and our tennis people aren't coming to URSA. And gotcha. so that's, that's a challenge for us. Uh, there are other industry events that we're doing right now that are support, they're, they're encouraging owners and managers to go and support their professionals. But URSA right here, right now, we've got to grow the tennis curriculum. We've got to have more tennis here. It hasn't been here for a long time, so this year was the first start. And I'm hoping in the years to come, we'll do more. I mean, URSA is the International Health Racquetball Sports, Sports, Racquet and the, Sports Association. Racquet Sports Association. Yeah. So uh, what could you say to those entrepreneurs, those tennis players, those tennis uh, industry club owners? What could you say to them regarding, regarding URSA? Well, URSA is, is incre as I mentioned before, incredibly dynamic and motivational. And, and I would like to see more of our, actually it's a fourth core pillar of our strategic plan is to be more strongly aligned with allied organizations. And URSA is one of our allied organizations. So we need to be more cooperative and collaborative with, you, with URSA because they are such an important tech, uh, part of our industry. Tennis clubs, indoor tennis clubs especially, are vital, especially in those northern climates. And that's where a lot of these folks are. And so we need to make sure that those managers and owners are reaching out and finding younger professionals to come into their clubs. It's a long process. It's a generational thing. But um, if, if people were here, they would see the opportunity to marry fitness and wellness with tennis. And um, I think just, just, just being a part of URSA is a fantastic Thank you so much, Thanks. Sean. How can people find out a little bit more about USPTA? Go to USPTA.com. We'd be happy to talk to anybody if they want to call our office. And thanks for URSA for the opportunity to be here.